Not everybody's meant to be a medic, but fortunately there's other medical MOSs out there. Hi Battle Babes and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I am currently a specialist in the United States Army. So I wanted to make this video because a lot of you had questions about what MOS you should choose, but more specifically what medical MOS you can choose from. A majority of you asked about 68 Whiskey in particular, which is a combat medic and even though that is a great MOS to have, I want to share some MOS options that you may not have considered and some of the benefits that they carry. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end, especially if you are in the MEPS process because you kind of want to go with the knowledge of these MOSs if you're interested in one of them just in case they're not offering them to you directly you can go ahead and ask about them once you get there so make sure you watch all the way to the end you don't want to miss this before I get into the video I wanted to mention that I've been taking a look at my analytics and I noticed about 80% of my watch time and views are coming from viewers that are not subscribed to my channel I hope with time I give you value out of my content turn you into a subscriber become part of my YouTube family and become a hashtag battle day so the first MOS I wanted to talk about was 68 Victor or a respiratory specialist it's important to note that the 68 Victor training is an inter-service school so it's not open to entry level. I just thought it was still worth mentioning because you can reclass to this MOS later on down the line and I think it's still a great MOS to have and the training alone is worth it because it awards an AA degree in applied science with a focus on respiratory therapy. How great is that opportunity? The next MOS is a 68 Tango which is an animal care specialist. I chose this MOS because the idea of being able to work with different animals of all different kinds is just amazing to me. It sounds like some type of dream job. And this job would be rewarding in a different way. All medical jobs are rewarding, but getting to work with animals, their different personalities, they're so innocent, they're so loving sometimes, sometimes because I have a cat. She's not loving all the time. I'm sure this job has struggles just like every other job, just like every other MOS. So I'm not being naive here, but I love animals and I find working with animals is satisfying, fulfilling in a completely different way when it comes to working with people. Yes, I absolutely love working with people. I love helping people. That's why I want to become a PA. But for right now, I'm talking about this MOS and I volunteer at animal shelters sometimes because it just brings I don't even know what word I'm looking for. I don't even know how to describe it, but I just absolutely love working with animals. Love working with animals so much. And these are the reasons I actually considered reclassing to this MOS at one point. 68 Kilo is another great choice, and a 68 Kilo is a medical laboratory specialist. One of the things that really interested me about this MOS and any of my 68 Kilos watching this, go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong, but the autonomy. From what I understand is a majority of the times you are working unsupervised and I guess I translated that into great training and being very confident in your job and knowing your ability to work. I mean, of course, you're going to always be working under some type of medical professional with a, a license, but as far as your day to day work, a majority of the time you are working unsupervised so you kind of have to know exactly what you're doing and something about that is just very satisfying that you don't have to be micromanaged all the time again correct me if I'm wrong but that is my takeaway from a few of the 68 kilos that I was talking to this is one of those MOS's that transition fully into the civilian life as a phlebotomist and after you are done with AIT you will actually be qualified to sit for the medical technologist exam so again you have credentials that is tied to this MOS 68 Charlie or a licensed practical nurse is the last MOS I wanted to mention and as you know it is the MOS that I am currently reclassing to and in my humble opinion it is the best MOS in the army let's argue to become a 68 Charlie or a licensed practical nurse or army LPN at the end of the training, you will be required to pass the NCLEX. So with this job, you will be licensed to not only work as an Army LPN, but also as a civilian LPN. So again, you have credentials that is connected to this MOS and that can fast track you to RN because there are numerous on top of numerous of programs, the bridge programs or the step programs, the LPN to RN. I've been looking into a few of them myself, but again, these are all these opportunities and pathways that 
that can just take you further and further. Now the MOSs I mentioned in this video, they are not all of the amazing job choices when it comes to the medical field that you can choose from, but they were my top four when I was deciding what I wanted to reclass to. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way YouTube gets it in front of other people who may benefit from seeing it. If you are interested in 68 Charlie, if you're interested in this MOS, the training and stuff like that, make sure you subscribe because I am currently in 68 Charlie AIT and I plan on giving an overview. Okay, listen, y'all, COVID has been throwing a lot of stuff off, okay? We just... We've been all over the place, all right? It really did kind of throw off the way school and stuff is ran. So it's just real crazy right now. And we're just trying to get, you know, back into a functional routine where we're still getting the vital information that we need so we're able to pass these freaking tests. Y'all, I'm about to go into my last two tests. So I'm almost done with first phase altogether. It's crazy. This, I mean, I, while I was through, in the, pro in, the, in the process, it seemed like it was taking forever. But now that I'm at the end and I look back, I'm like, that really wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad at all. So again, I will be posting an update after I pass my last test because I will pass that last test. And it's basically going to be just a breakdown of my experience, talking about the scheduling, some of the testing material, not too deep into it because I'm not sure if I can do that. but. If you're interested in seeing an entire overview of what first phase was all about for 68 Charlie AIT, make sure you subscribe. That way YouTube alerts you when I get that video posted. Don't forget to leave any of your comments and questions down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, for the record.